Hello, and welcome to the National Weather Service Seattle, Washington office presentation on tropical cyclones. Known as hurricanes, typhoons, or simply cyclones, these hot water fueled beasts are the natural disasters that we watch coming. Its path of destruction turns into a news story that everyone can watch evolve. They're the one event that has names just like ours. Decades ago, the hurricane of 1900 caused the highest death toll due to a natural disaster in America. A few years back, we watched Katrina destroy the precarious city of New Orleans. More recently, Sandy smashed into the mid-Atlantic coast after it looked like she would recurve back into the Atlantic. They can be devastating, but they sure are fascinating. So how does it happen? Down in the tropics, especially in certain hot spots, there can be a lot of low pressure weather systems. These systems mean a lot of thunderstorms over expanses of warm ocean. As these storms centralize and organize themselves into a fairly symmetrical circular spiral, they are classified as a tropical depression. These tropical depressions can die off or they can gain power from the surrounding ocean and spin themselves up to surface winds higher than 39 miles per hour. This is serious stuff and when it happens, we know there's a good possibility of a cyclone. These are tropical storms and they are important enough to be given names. Eventually, if the tropical storm doesn't die down again, its wind ca winds can top 74 miles per hour. That can cause some serious destruction. These are known as hurricane force winds because the storm is now a tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclones are driven to spin by something called the Coriolis effect. Hurricanes are such big systems that while the earth spins underneath them, the winds of the hurricane don't. From their point of view, they're headed straight for the low pressure s center of the hurricane. This may be confusing because from our point of view, they're circular, so they must be spinning. The key here is that we're spinning with the earth, so the winds of the hurricane appear to be deflected and get their characteristic spiral shape. On top of this, the earth is not a simple spinning disk. It's a sphere. Every part of the globe has to make one rotation per day, but the equator has more ground to cover than the poles do, so the poles move more slowly. This means that the straight path that the hurricane is trying to take is also deflected. In the northern hemisphere, the earth is spinning in such a way that the hurricane will spin counterclockwise, and in the southern hemisphere, it will spin in the opposite direction. There are three main regions that our generic example tropical cyclone is likely from. If it forms in the Northwest Pacific Ocean, it's known as a typhoon. These are often the strongest storms and the most numerous. In the North Atlantic, on the other hand, it would be known as a hurricane. This is the kind of tropical cyclone that could hit the US, so it's the one that we're accustomed to hearing about. A lot of tropical cyclones form off the coast of Australia in the Indian Ocean. These are simply shortened to cyclones. But remember, all these different names are for the same storm. When a hurricane is headed for a populated area, we really need some way to tell how bad it's gonna be. Here in the US, we use the Saffir-Simpson scale. This scale is based on wind speed and lowest barometric pressure. There's an element of it that explains how bad the potential destruction is, and that's based on storm surge, which is the height of the ocean above normal without including waves. But since this depends on many factors, it might be very off. A category one hurricane is the one with the slowest wind speeds and highest barometric pressure. An example of this is when Hurricane Sandy hit Jamaica in 2012. An example of a category two hurricane was Hurricane Earl hitting St. Martin in 2010. When Hurricane Sandy hit Cuba, she was a category three hurricane. A Category 4 hurricane was I Hurricane Iris when she hit Belize in 2001. And an example of a Category 5 hurricane was Hurricane Han Andrew hitting Florida in 1994. A Category 5 hurricane has sustained winds greater, greater than 156 miles per hour and a barometric pressure below 920 millibars. The destruction may be catastrophic and the storm surge will probably be greater than 18 feet. One day, late in the 2012 season, a storm was brewing in the Caribbean Sea. 
This system centralized into a tropical depression on October 22nd and then quickly strengthened and evolved into a full-blown hurricane. The National Hurricane Center out in Miami, Florida, looks at models, past events, and current conditions to make predictions about the hurricane's path as it heads towards the U.S. As it gets closer, these predictions are updated and become more and more like the actual event. By October 24th, the forecast saw Sandy hitting the U.S. Although these warnings were sent out to residents, the response was not strong. The last hurricane to make landfall in the area was Irene the year before, and she made less of a splash than predicted. Many residents chose to ignore the evacuation orders being given out. Soon after this prediction, Sandy made landfall in Jamaica as a Category 1 hurricane. This landfall didn't slow her down, and she quickly intensified to Category 3 and made landfall in Cuba the next day. Things were looking a little better for the U.S. after that because Sandy hit a patch of wind shear and slowed down significantly, even losing hurricane status the next day. But this only lasted for a few hours, and then she was back up to being a healthy cyclone. It may have appeared to the inexperienced eye that her path might continue into the Atlantic at this point, but on the 29th, she quickly curved back towards the west, merging with an intense low-pressure system, which dramatically increased her size, and made landfall in New Jersey. Sandy was quite the storm. She was the cause of approximately 147 deaths directly and $50 billion in damage, including a storm surge from Florida to Maine with a peak height of about nine feet and tropical storm force winds covering a diameter of 1,000 miles and impacting 24 states. Hurricane weakening and even death may occur in many different ways. If a hurricane hits a patch of wind shear, it can essentially be ripped apart. This is part of what weakens Sandy after hitting Cuba. If a hurricane hits a patch of cold water, its fuel source is significantly less efficient. This is another reason that Sandy was weakened. If a hurricane makes landfall, its fuel source is effectively completely gone. This is what caused Sandy to change significantly after she hit New Jersey, and eventually what killed her. Just because a hurricane loses its hurricane status doesn't mean that all is lost. As we've mentioned, it can gain power and bring its status back. In a more interesting case, the hurricane is often reborn as an extratropical cyclone. This is the change that Sandy underwent after hitting the coast. Extratropical cyclones are much more common than tropical cyclones and happen every day over the mid-latitudes. They cause anything from a little cloudiness to intense thunderstorms containing tornadoes and are effectively a low pressure center with fronts. Hurricanes might be very interesting, but if there's one in your area, it can be frightening. To help ease that fear, here are a few safety tips. The first thing to remember is that a hurricane warning means that there will almost certainly be a hurricane arriving soon, assuming that one is not already there. As soon as you hear a warning, prepare yourself. Don't wait for the confirmation. The storm surge and thunderstorms caused by hurricanes often lead to flash flooding. In the case of a flash flood, seek high ground. Please make sure not to drive on flooded roads, even if it's just puddles. It's very hard to gauge the depth of the water and it's possible that the road underneath has been washed away. Hurricanes are also known for their high winds. To keep yourself safe from those, close all of your windows and doors and stay as far away from them as possible. Flying debris can cause very significant damage. Go to the most sheltered area that you can find and wait out the storm there. If you're asked to vacate by the authorities, it means that they have thoroughly reviewed the conditions and think that it is very important to do so. If it's not well worth the inconvenience, they would not have put out the orders. To keep updated about conditions, stay tuned on your NOAA weather radio or visit www.weather.gov slash Seattle. Thank you for listening to this presentation on hurricanes. Let's recap it really quickly. A hurricane starts out as a depression in the tropics. The Coriolis effect spins it into a tropical storm before reaching tropical cyclone status. These are called cyclones, hurricanes, or typhoons, depending on the region. Here in the U.S., where we call them hurricanes, their severity is described with the Saffir-Simpson scale, which is based on wind speed and pressure. 
After becoming a hurricane, these storms will die down due to cold water, land, or wind shear, but are often reborn as an extratropical cyclone. If one of these storms is coming through your area, make sure to keep safe from flash floods and high winds. For more information, please visit our website at www.weather.gov Seattle or the National Hurricane Centers at www.nhc.noaa.gov.